Is the Wilderness Dying? Day two of the Wilderness documentary, we adventured out to some of the most active parts of single way combat in the wild. We were able to find a lot of PKers and even a lot of PVMers. And we PK'd the most we PK'd so far in the series. But now it is day three and it's time to switch it up and head south of the wild. The areas we're going to explore are still pretty deep in the wilderness, but our prey can now teleport instantly if they think they're in danger. So it's finally time to bring out the normal spell book. We need Teleblock and we need a strategy to sneak up on our prey before they teleport away. That rhymed? Didn't mean to do that, and let's jump right into our first area. I will be starting off at Venonatus, one of the main bosses in the wild, and also one of the most profitable bosses. So I'm pretty confident we will find some decent loot at Venonatus, but it is pretty much completely multi with a sliver of single on the east half, so I gotta be careful of running into clans. Now there's two main ways to get to Venonatus. I use the crab teleport, which is pretty much the fastest way to get to this area, but they are very expensive so I would probably recommend just using the games necklace to the corp cave teleport and then doing a nice little jog east until you run into the spider area. There are three main lures for Venonatus and I'm going to teach you how to check them all by using this hill. But beware this hill is dangerous because clans use this a lot and it is in multi so be careful you could easily get pk first things first we're going to stand on this magnificent hill and look towards the spider and if we see any sort of animations at all that means someone is doing venonatus because animations such as spells mages and even burying bones will render in farther than people so you're going to be able to sneak up on someone without them knowing you're there if nothing is visible then go ahead and check if the spider is even in its spawn if the spider is not in its spawn, go ahead and check the west lure, because that is the only other option where it could be. If uh, the spider is there, you're going to go ahead and switch worlds, rinse and repeat until you do find your first target. Let's go ahead and start the timer and put this to the test. Oh, a level 87 crossbow, not bad. Now I did gear up my peer for such an occasion, and it looks like he's using the closest safe spot, so. Oh, he got PK'd. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Oh man! You know the worst part is like I'm kind of excited for a pure fight, but I would have made more just killing that guy than fucking Water Staff McGee right here, you know? All right, so I could have turned around and DDS'd him, but I'm kind of uh, I'm kind of a baddie right now. Uh, I guess we're gonna do a one v three situation. <laughs> That was a fat chance right there. And we got another one. <laughs> These guys know what they're doing. He won't let me kill his friend. Oh. Oh. <laughs> yes! Yes! Okay, I don't have any potions, so this guy pulls a TB out of his ass, I'm dead. But I think I should be fine. So, I guess Venonatus starting off is gonna be a 1v4 pure PK. Gonna go ahead and just teleport out. I missed a couple things, but I don't have any. You know, I'm feeling a little risky out here. Uh, the bag's gonna have 400k in it, which doesn't seem like a lot with all that effort. And there's not much to price check. 200 bolts, so 100 of those. Whew! My man, I have not pure britted in a while. That was quite scary. So apparently the pure is putting in some work at Venonatus, ran into a couple more lower levels. Everyone had a rune crossbow. Finally got to bring out the main and also take a couple more people out, but no one really had as much risk as I thought I would run into until I finally ran into my first person with a crossbow. All right, so level 80 still here with the crossbow. It's a bit of a rough situation as that uh, could happen there. But now we got the spider helping us, which is good. Thing is, the singles line is super close. So if this guy just runs at the spider, then he will be fine. But he's running directly down the multi line, which is super lucky. Anyone had the spider's help? 
And we got him. <laughs> Thank you for panicking, sir. Crosbo, we're finally down. 40 minutes in. Oh, jeez. Usually uh, there's more of them. Thank God I brought the pure out, though. Seems like the pure's coming in clutch for this spot. We're looking at 1.3k Ether, 350k Loot, and he had a couple drops, but uh, pretty much on the lower end for people who are risking Ether. Over the next hour of searching at Venonatus, I ran into a decent amount of people, but none of them had any risk at all, and all of them were using rune crossbows. And in my time of searching this area, all I've ever really found were people using regular crossbows, so I don't know if the meta has changed or these guys are just very scared of PKers. Also, I ran into a lot of low levels doing Venonatus, and when I say low levels, I mean extremely low levels doing the cannon method. And I was kind of curious, so I thought I'd run up and question this guy about it. And, uh... Hey, cannon. No? Oh shit, what the fuck? Another it's another level 54 cannoning. The fuck's up with this? Oh. Dude. <laughs> I'm sorry, buddy! <laughs> oh, I didn't know he was there! And that man was never seen again. I did feel a little bad, but damn, that was just too funny. I did not expect him to get one shot. I ran into some more people and then actually ran into a main PKer at my level that wasn't in a big clan. Oh, I just catch some tangle. All right, awesome. Oh yeah, it, it, sometimes the kills are just too easy. Sometimes they're too easy, man. Uh, so it's 89K loot on the floor. Obviously this guy looks like he has much more loot. Surprise, and I got him. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Just such a, just such a way to kill someone, man. But 450k and a couple extra potions and a glory. Feels good. So it's just been two hours over at Venonatus only so far, and I'm trying to keep these segments in different parts of the wild a one and two hour segment when I go check a new spot out. But we haven't switched to all the worlds. <laughs> we still have, uh, yeah, quite a decent amount more. So we'll just see uh, how long it takes playing two accounts and checking every single world of Venonatus. As my adventure continued, I ended up PKing even more people, but I only ran into PVMers risking the bare minimum needed to defeat Venonatus. No rev weapons, no blessed dehyde, just a sea of rune crossbows. As I finally switched to the last world, I was berated by a clan which I managed to tank and teleport away safely, where we have switched to every world in just under 3 hours, getting 20 PKs and making 3.5 mil profit so far. Sadly, this is probably the least active I've ever seen Venonatus, but there are still people to PK and there is still many things to do in this spot, so it is not necessarily dead. Our next journey is going to be over to the Chaos Druids, which is a little bit far west, the Chaos Elder Druids, one of the best places to train in the wilderness, and when paired with the Rev Mace, it may be one of the best places to train in RuneScape. Well, at least on a pure. And the best part is this area is literally built around an altar, meaning you don't have to worry about any of your prayer usage, and you can save all of your potions for PKers. All you need to do to get here is use your burning amulet and teleport to the Chaos Temple. Now, I would recommend losing any sort of skull before heading out because my method of scouting requires no overhead icons. Go ahead and make your way to the back of the temple and stand right behind this pillar, and because the roof of this area cannot be toggled off, you are very well hidden and can easily scout without being in combat. The only way they can actually see you is if they have the rune light plug-in, and even then, they're usually so AFK, it doesn't matter anyways. And just to give you guys a little info here, this is how easy it is to check a world. You don't have to run anywhere. If they're going to be somewhere, they're going to be in this vicinity training on the druids, so... Quickest place to check in the wild. Uh, if only it was the most active, though. Alright, we found our first guy, 124. Oh, and he looks fucking hefty, buddy. So he's in full void. And he's already gone. <laughs> wow. Well, what a find and what a fail. Oh, we just ran into a bit of a pure scuffle here. I can attack. 74. The only one I can attack though. If they run a little deeper, I think I can get on the 72. Or just a tad. 
But kind of cool that I can't get hit by everything that's slapping right now. This guy's super low, gets Ramboed right in the face. All right. And then we got the 68 versus the 72. If the 72 goes deeper, we'll take him out. But the first kill I expected here was not to be a pure PKer. <laughs> 100k loot, we got ourselves a Pith Helm for some reason. I had some pretty high hopes for the Elder Chaos Druids, but I was finding literally nobody, and when I did find someone, they had no risk. Until I luckily stumbled upon this guy. Oh my god, a person. This is gonna be a little weird though. Hopefully I can hit him. What in the f- Okay, I think I'm gonna die. Because, uh, it's usually... No one PKs here alone. Got him. Awesome. So I'm not TP'd anymore. Oof. And you, my friend, since you didn't help me, are going to die now. Yeah, I saw you watching the whole thing. You could have easily helped. No. No way. I got another chance on him. I thought I fucked up there. Come on, grab it. Oh, he just camped it. Beautiful. Okay. Oh, that was such a. That was so close. That was way too close. Whew. I thought searching the cast elder druids was gonna be a huge waste after like a hundred worlds in a row were empty. So, I know this documentary is not supposed to be all about excitement. It's supposed to be the reality of the wild. But it does make me happy that I got a couple kills here. Either way, walking out about 700k loot. We got a couple more worlds to go. I was luckily able to find two more people to PK before ending my trip at the Elder Druids. But yes, it was quite dead for such an immaculate training spot in the wilderness. Our next stop was going to be Vedion, which has two phases and four minions to kill before you can even finish this boss. One of the weirdest bosses of the wild, and also one of the most profitable if you were able to get the Ring of the Gods, which is over 20 mil. With all this information, you would think this place would be fairly active, but we found no one at Vedion, and I don't even think it's worth mentioning this place. The only activity you will find is this one clan who PKs only in this spot and no one else. So. We're gonna go ahead and scrap Vedion from this series, as I do not deem it a hot spot anymore unless it starts to be a little more active in the future, and head on over to Green Dragons. Green Dragons, home of the bot farms, is one of the most iconic places in the wilderness. For all of us growing up with RuneScape watching those Elf Mage PK videos, or maybe even those Spark Mac Dragon Claw videos at Green Drags. Now that being said, if the bot farms didn't exist, this place would be pretty barren. I still consider it a hot spot though because you could always come out the green dragons and PK bots to practice your PKing, make some bank, and do some good for runescape. But we are going to be leaving our adamant full helm brethren alone and going after anybody else risking decent items and any PKers near the green dragon hotspot, so hopefully we can find some good loot. What is happening here? Is this a main? So this 102 is getting his ass beat, right? But his buddy's gonna jump in and help him out. Hopefully soon. And he's gonna come back and get the loot. And then I'll be here doing this. Cause he can't hit me. He's probably fucking low. I agree with you, buddy. I should. Smite for staff? Oh my god. Okay, that's the staff of the dead PK off level 102 said fuck off idiot Um, so I'm gonna have to officially say green dragons is my favorite PK spot in the wild now and I actually don't trust me looting this because Of clans this is gonna be the biggest PK so far in the series 9.5 mil staff of dead I always try to take the high level fights cuz uh content wise uh, so if you didn't just subscribe and drop a like right there, I don't know, man. That was some pretty good stuff. I think I'm a little scarier than the average PKer, sadly. Oh, dude, he's running sideways. No way do I get in tank. Oh, yeah, beautiful. So here's a PKer. Reminds me of the good days, man. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god.
Yo. We decimated him. It's not the best loot. But damn, did that guy go down hard. 60k loot. There's a level 95 skull. Uh... Okay, that is gonna be a nice 240k. Do you skim me 78k cash and barrels gloves? And I'm still confused. I'm level 93. Okay. I'm sorely. Did you see an OB cape? Uh, there's nothing I can do. Holy shit, did you see that? Alright, if you can just go down to that. Ah, oh, thank you. Oh man, what a struggle. Was it worth it? Adamant plate skirt, adamant full helm G, adamant scimitar. Okay, this man took it too far. Why you got a skimmy, boy? Uh, 3,200 iron arrows. All of this is 80k. What a struggle. What the fuck is this? Oh my god, throw me right back at a 2005. Because this man's time traveling, baby. Ooh. You have any food, sir? I want to lock this kill in because he's only got a couple levels to live, even though he's about to die to ring recoil. But, yeah. Yo, full rune. <laughs> I don't think that's, I don't think you're going to find people like this if you come PK here. That was just rare and lucky and weird. Green Dragons is uh, impressing me right now. Very impressed. I do have to say Green Dragons has impressed me. I found two more people before I hopped to every world. One was a PKer who died to Fire Breath, which is funny as hell, and the other guy was just a Rag Ranger. Now, before you head over to Green Dragons, do beware there are single clans that will fall in on you, as it happened to me on a pure, and these guys were in max gear. I truly don't understand what they're doing because it really wasn't super active, so I don't know who they're really finding. But for a solo PKer, you will find some people at Green Drags, which does make me very happy. And of course, you do have the bots. But we have now concluded the six hours of PKing around all of these hotspots, and we have PKed 38 people on our adventure, making 15.8 mil. The most we have made so far in this documentary. It's all thanks to that staff of the dead PK, though. So if that wasn't there, we wouldn't have made nearly as much. Now it is time to rate the areas of the wilderness that we have adventured to with some dead man mode skulls. A one key skull means no activity whatsoever to maybe one person every 100 worlds, and a five key skull is like 10 to 15 people per world just like rev caves. And starting off at Venonatus, I'm going to give Venonatus a three key skull. As it was active, there were people there, but it wasn't consistently active like it used to be. It was one person every 5 to 10 worlds, and they were not risking very much loot. The Chaos Elder Druids are going to go ahead and get a 2-key skull, as it was pretty much barren, dry, absolutely nobody except for maybe a couple people training with very little loot. Vedion, I'm going to be crossing off the wilderness map completely. It is a useless part of the wild. Uh, if you want to defend Vedion in the comment sections, I'm completely for it, but in my opinion, just don't go there. It's not worth it. And Green Dragons, surprisingly, is going to be getting a 3-key skull, just like Venonatus. Uh, obviously, you can give it a 5-key skull because there's all these bots, but if we're just talking about actual activity, 3-keys, there was a decent amount of PKers, and there's people risking what... What they shouldn't be risking. I found so many skull people dragging skimmies. It was weird. So hopefully you guys enjoyed day three of the wilderness documentary. I am at Mad Cow. There will be more in the future. Feel free to drop a like to help me get recommended. Subscribe so you don't miss out on any of my content. And like always, guys, I will see you in the next episode.